Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So I'll be continuing the previous tutorial and if you have not seen the previous tutorial then there is no meaning in going ahead and watching this because if you have not seen previously then everything over here will go bouncer for you. So I'll just go through previously. As mentioned previously the framework will choose the best encoder possible when generating our payload. But there are times when one needs to use a specific type and regardless of what Metasploit thinks. So if you use a non alphabetic numeric characters or that or some stuff or some command that uh, contains only non alphabetic numeric characters, the Shikata Nagai, uh, Shikata Ganai uh, encoder would not be appropriate in this case as it, as it uses my, very much every characters available to encode. So looking at the encoder list, I will go ahead and use the non alpha encoder or uh, into 32 bit non alpha uh, encoder that would be present. So I'll just go ahead and uh, show, try to see what are, are what things are available. So I'll just type show and I'll just type encoders. As you can see, we have these multiple uh, payloads, but over here I would not be using them. I want something which does not contain alphanumeric characters. So let's see if we have that. Uh, into 86 or and let's see. Okay, so as you can see, we have the 32 bit non alphanumeric character. It is quite low, it's not that good, but again, it's not about having the good one. Sometimes it's about actually going ahead and getting out of that. And whereas Shikata Naganai was an excellent one, we will be using the lowest one, which is not that good. But still, it will prove to be excellent, and I'll show you how. So let's go ahead and generate a non alphanumeric character payload. So I'll just type generate slash e space into 86 slash and I'll just type non alpha okay no encoders encoded the buffer successfully okay I'll just go ahead and check okay perfect so let's redo our bind shell payload but this time we'll tell the framework to use a non alpha encoder and I'll be using the e switch hyphen o, hyphen e switch over here so previously uh, it was not that good and it did not run in a perfect way. The reason being that I used that and it was a non-alpha encoder. But let me check if I could go and do that again. So if everything went according to uh, what I said, a payload will not contain any alphanumeric characters. But we must be caref careful when we are, let's say, we are using a different, enco different uh, encoder other than the default as it tends to give us larger payload. For instance, uh, this one uh, is much larger than our previous examples. So let's go ahead and check what exactly. So okay, so hyphen E to go ahead and use the name of the encoder. For E and I'll just use into 86. I cannot see any reason why it is not using the tab completion. 6. Let me check if I could go ahead and get more help. Yeah, I'll just go to show encoders and I'll be using the non alpha. So I'll just copy it and paste it over here. Okay, perfect. So, what was the mistake that I did previously? Let me check. Non alpha. Okay, non alpha into it is non alpha. Okay, I cannot see any. Okay, uh, it was the spelling A P L H A. My bad, never mind. So, our next option would be on the list would be the hyphen F switch, and I'll just go ahead and show you exactly the generate help. Uh, hyphen F is the output file name, so it's not a big deal. This gives us the ability to generate our uh, payloads to a file instead of displaying it on screen. So as always, it follows the generate command uh, with the file path. So I can you can just go ahead and type in the generate as just to show you hyphen f, and you can just type root and wherever you want to go ahead and save it to, and the file name in the end. After that, we have the hyphen b command, uh, which is uh, the list of characters to avoid that I have already taught you, and. This is not exactly what I would be teaching you right now because by using the cat command, that's the same way we would be using the command shell. We can see our payload was successfully saved. So as you can see it, uh, it's also possible to use more than one option when generating a payload. So uh, it, I can I just don't want to use the B. I can use the encoders, uh, the characters to avoid and the hyphen F to go ahead and use the same thing. So next on our list of option is the 
iteration switch that would be hyphen i uh, that's the number of encoding iterations that would be in a nutshell this tells the framework how many encoding it passes uh, it must do before proceed producing the final payload one reason for doing this would be to create a stealth and antivirus evasion antivirus evasion is covered in greater detail in my one of my later tutorials so let's compare our bind shell payload uh, generated using one iteration versus two iteration on the same shell code so I can just go ahead and do the same thing again generate hyphen B and I can just go ahead and type slash zero zero slash and I can hit enter and then I can just go ahead and type the same thing plus hyphen I and two so it will be encoded twice so comparing the two outputs you can see the obvious it effect that the second one was 382 bytes and the previous one was 355 bytes and the second one is quite a big and it's much better so uh, if you go ahead and compare the two, uh, the effect uh, you can see the obvious effect that second iteration had uh, had on our payload. First of all, the byte size is larger. The more iterations uh, one does, uh, the larger our payload will be. Secondly, comparing the first few bytes of the highlighted code, you can also see uh, they are no longer the same. This is due to the second iteration or second encoding uh, pass. It encoded our payload once, then took the payload and encoded it again. So you can let's go ahead and look at our shell code and see how much of a difference five iterations would make. Just type five, and okay, it's four sixty three bytes. Not that big, but again, sometimes uh, it depends a lot. So the change is significant when compared to all the previous output. It's slightly larger, and our bytes are nowhere near similar, which would in theory make this version of our payload less prone to detection. I have spent lots of time generating shell code from the start with default values. So in case of a bind shell, the default listening port would be 4444, as you can see over here, and the R4 and everything else we would have to provide. Often this must be changed. So you can accomplish this by using the hyphen O switch followed by the value that you wish to change. Uh, let's take a look at which options uh, we can change for this payload. From MSF console, I will issue the show options command and as you can see we have the L port as 4444 so I can just go ahead and type L port and I can just type let's say 445 so if I go ahead and check the show options and as you can see our L port has been changed to 445 so we can go ahead and change it to anything that you want and the syntax is uh, variable equals to value that's it nothing much so yeah, it can be separated by a comma bit in between so not much that to it after that we have the generate uh, hyphen o command and uh, the l port we can, I can straight away go ahead and type let's say if I wanted to do multiple things at one time hyphen o and I can type l port equals to one two three four and I can type comma and I can type let's say exit function equals to sesh to go ahead and securely exit hyphen b slash and I can just type x zero zero and I need to go ahead and put this in quotes from zero and I can just go ahead and encode it using the into 86 slash shikata underscore go underscore nine and as you can see uh, it's again 355 bytes uh, the reason being that I have not ran it multiple times but still uh, it's good and our port has been changed to one two three four and yeah that's it you cannot see any uh, x into zero zero or anything other thing so finally let's take a look at the nop sled length and the output format uh, options when generating payloads the default output format a given is ruby although the ruby language is extremely powerful and popular not everyone codes in it and we have the capacity to tell the framework to give it um, the ur payload in different coding formats such as Perl, C or Java for example. So adding a knob sled at the beginning is also possible when generating our shell code. So first, let's take a look at few different output formats and see how the hyphen T switch is used. Like all the other options all uh, that needs to be done, it is a type in the switch followed by the format name as displayed in the help menu. So I can just type generate uh, hyphen T uh, C and it will be encoded in C again and you won't see much of a difference over here if I wanted it to encode in Java then I can just type JAVA and it will be encoded in Java as you can see the difference is quite huge uh, but the size is the same never mind so 
looking at the output for the different programming languages, you can see that each output adheres to the respective language syntax. A hash is used for comments in Ruby, but in C, it's replaced with slash and asterisk, uh, such as this and this. And th that's the syntax. And looking at all the three outputs, the uh, arrays are properly declared for the language format selected, making it ready to be, be copied and pasted into our script. So also adding an NOP that's no operation or next operation sled, it's accomplished with the hyphen S switch followed by the number of NOPs. This will add the sled at the beginning of our payload and keep in mind that the sh uh, larger the sled, the larger the shell code will be. So adding a 10 NOPs will add 10 bytes to the total size. And so I'll just go ahead and show it to you, generate hyphen S and 14 and you can see that uh, it's 342 bytes in between and uh, it just added a 10 byte, it was 335 or something like that and it increased. So uh, the, this highlights the yellow text uh, shows us that the NOP is at the payload's beginning and comparing the next three lines with the shell code you will be able to see that they are exactly the same. Total bytes as expected grew by 14 bytes in total from 330 to its 342, sorry 328 to its 342. So yeah, that would be it for this tutorial and that's uh, much for payloads. It's uh, There's nothing more much to that. So you can just go ahead and check every payload and see how they are encoded and get much more information to that. So that would be it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial I'll be starting with uh, the database of the MSF uh, exploit or sorry not like MSF exploit of the MSF console that's the Metasploit. And we'll get into much deeper database and how we can create our own database in that itself.